Welcome to your UA Light Celestial Insight. July is a month for finding meaning from the past and finding inner and outer balance for flow and fearless, focused, aligned action to create your future. As you come into contact with new creative and spiritual ideas, experiences, and faded connections. And this is because we have a concentration of our celestial bodies like the sun, Mercury, Venus, and Mars, all traveling in succession through the cardinal water sign of Cancer, the fire sign Leo, and Virgo. With Mars, our planet of action, leading the pack and transiting Leo, and then spending most of the month in Virgo. And so this means that even though we are fresh out of Gemini season and had a Gemini new moon in June, it's still a very mercurial action-oriented month focused on learning, clarity and awareness, communication and creative expression skills, action and initiative in your affairs, and receiving news and information, right? So take a minute to like this video and subscribe to the channel and let's get into the astrology overview and channeled spiritual and practical guidance to help you successfully navigate the month. Having the sun and Mercury traveling through Cancer and Leo while Venus is in Leo and Mars traveling through Virgo is really about bringing in connections, information, and opportunities that offer support. And that offer an opportunity to open your heart and mind to new experiences and ultimately a new chapter of communicating and leading carefully, creatively, and courageously from a space of authenticity and experience. It's an extremely cardinal and mercurial month of movement, discovery, planning, and communication because the planets involved in the majority of the aspects this month are the Sun, Mercury, Jupiter, and Uranus, right? And with us having the Sun in Cancer and Mars in Virgo, it means lots of cosmic support and emphasis on inner an outer balance and digestion. <laughs> After all, cancer rules the stomach. And so inner outer balance, balanced health, work-life balance, and balance in your alone time to connect with yourself and digest new information and experiences versus social and work time spent learning and connecting with others while you are taking advantage of this incredible cosmic energy portal, presenting opportunities, and truly making the world your oyster. This portal of opportunity was activated last month with Jupiter, the planet of wisdom, travel, and blessings, crossing the north node of destiny and manifestation on June 1st, and Venus entering into Leo on June 5th. And this is a dynamic duo for serendipity, for self-discovery and cultural discovery, and for healing adventures and prosperity. And they are both just getting started. And so to find out how the Venus and Leo transit will be impacting you until October of this year, and how Jupiter and Taurus will be impacting you the remainder of 2023 through May 2024, check out your personal astrology and tarot readings linked here on the channel related to these transits, okay? But this portal of abundance was activated that first week of June and remains open the entire summer, really. And because so much Mercury, Jupiter, and Uranus activity and this month's North Node change into Aries can lend to so much enlightenment, discovery, aspiration, and this sort of big picture point of view and impulsive energy, right? While coming into contact with new information, experiences, and resources, and even like just visionary developments, right? Having the sun and cancer and Mars and Virgo 
and our major outer planets retrograde amidst all of that is actually really perfect, right? It's perfect for grounding everyone a bit, for grounding the nervous system, um, and grounding in terms of if you experience any sort of emotional, even nervous system overwhelm, right? And just really forcing everyone to check in with their heart, with their internal compass and gut wisdom, including gut health, right? And to review details, to consider lessons from past experiences and daily habits, to just make sure that you're aligning your life decisions, your daily diet, your actions and affairs and relationships with what feels good and what keeps you secure and what is in your long-term best and best interest after careful consideration. Okay. Because Pluto, Neptune, and Saturn all being retrograde are about course correction and second chances, right, to do better based on experience and wisdom about the past. And so the big picture astrology things to note for July is that it consists of Cancer season and Leo season, right? The sun will be in Cancer and uh, enters into Leo only the last week of the month. And because we have Neptune stationing retrograde on that very first day of July, um, it means that all of our major outer planets, Saturn, Pluto, and Neptune will then all be retrograde, okay? And the month begins with a full moon in Capricorn on the 3rd. And um, if you pay attention, this has been happening all year, really, with each month beginning with a full moon, and that really putting emphasis on closing and beginning new chapters each month, right? Really welcoming in new energy each month. And speaking of new energy, we are in the midst of our 2023 eclipse season, and that is truly transformative and bringing in new energy because the North Node points of destiny and growth and the South Node point of karma, they're both changing signs after about a year and a half, right? And the North Node will be transitioning into the sign of Aries in particular, which is the sign of brave new beginnings, okay? And this switch, the node switching into Aries and Libra, happens on the day of the new moon in Cancer. And so this is also all cardinal energy, right? The North Node being in in Aries, having a, a Cancer new moon, a Capricorn full moon. These are all cardinal signs, while we also have so much uh, cardinal and uh, mercurial energy being activated by uh, the sun and Mercury's movements through Cancer as well, right? And so again, it's all punctuating this emphasis on new beginnings. And to learn more about what the node changes mean for you, definitely check out the 2023 Eclipse Season Guide here on the channel. It's a comprehensive guide filled with so much wisdom and a personalized astro tarot reading for you. And it is the halfway point of the year, so it's a great time for checking in with the predictions and the the practical, strategic, and spiritual guidance of these transits that will impact the remainder of 2023 through 2024. You'll find all of these astrology and tarot forecasts for these transits in a playlist called Current Astrology Transits linked here and at the top of the home page, all right? The other big picture things to note for July is that Mercury will be in Cancer really um, only the first 10 days of the month and we'll move into Leo and be there for the remainder of the month. And similarly, Mars will be in Leo for about the first 10, 11 days of the month and then move into Virgo for most of the month. And Mercury and Mars will switch signs at approximately the same time around the 10th and the 11th. The last big picture thing to note is that Venus and Leo will station retrograde this month, right, on the 22nd 
in again venus is going to be in leo for four months and this retrograde is going to last until september and then it will uh, station direct and be in leo through to october and you can find out more about that in the other video but overall, right, big picture, this astrology will be activating so much, right? And that is why the theme is about balance. It's going to be activating wanderlust, right? And this feeling of the world being your oyster. And so much of that is thanks to Jupiter being in Taurus and making a few aspects this month. And that is all about highlighting travel for education, vacation, uh, workations, right? Just travel for exciting social work and learning experiences and even wellness retreats. This is going to be a month that's also about closing certain emotional chapters and beginning a new one. Really healing emotional wounds that boost confidence and determination. And part of that being thanks to connecting the dots of the past in some way. Connecting the thought the dots of the past in this life and even related to past lives, right? Just profound clarity of the meaning and wisdom of past experiences to give you profound clarity in who you are as a spiritual being, right? With a purpose here on earth. And one of the things that I got with this is that I'm getting, you know, there's going to be greater awareness of ancestral histories and wisdoms, but even on these really deep levels, for those of you who are really deep divers, you know, greater awareness of these specific sort of spiritual archetypes, ancestors and entities who support you and who gift you wisdom and who you are an embodiment of this life, actually, um, and who are helping you to carry out a new legacy on earth, right? And for new earth, right? And with Uranus being in the mix, this is all about creative and spiritual insights and synchronistic and faded findings happening this month related to um, those things that I just mentioned, but also related to um, health remedies, recipes, right? In addition to that past life knowledge and spiritual wisdom, um, and even, you know, a lot of creative and spiritual insights for business and trade knowledge, right? Just in general, synchronistic and faded findings to help you in your success and some long-term goals. This energy this month is also about organizing, organizing family, home, health, and travel matters, right? So this could be visa and foreign affairs logistics. This could be about renewing immigration or health insurance documentation. Um, it's really positive for moving forward with legal issues or handling any legal travel or immigration logistics and correspondence, right? I'm thinking that with this astrology, we may see some governmental activity related to immigration and even healthcare measures at this time. Um, in general, I'm getting that this astrology is going to affect the world in terms of there just being a lot of legislation. But in terms of organizing family, home, health, and travel matters, this astrology might also put a spotlight on getting your checkups, right, for yourself, children, and pets, and organizing child and pet care related to travel. Having the sun and Mercury and Venus in Leo could also put a spotlight on making wardrobe, beauty, diet, and home updates, right, this month. And even a spotlight on child custody or any family or civil court legal affairs. And generally with us having Mars and then ending the month with uh, Mercury moving into Venus, it's just really good for long-term planning and organizing overall, right? And with that Mars in Virgo, it's really going to be about careful, calculated, but also courageous risks to step into the ring of life, right? And that opened in the doorway to a lot of connections of care and generosity as well. And in general, this astrology for July is really 
good for fearless and creative self-expression and for having some success with creative marketing, finding faded relationships, right? And having a lot of success with relationship building, networking, negotiation, and contracts. And in general, too, it's a positive month for ventures in food and hospitality industries, right? And um, art and entertainment, social media, fashion, beauty, photography. Um, if you have ventures in any of these areas, it could be a month where you experience a lot of growth, right? Amidst competition, right? And Mercury's transit through Cancer and Leo and Mars's transit through Leo and Virgo can also mean that, you know, emotional reactivity to uh, information could be could be high, right? And and where you could even feel very critical and judgmental, right, of yourself and even others, right? And so the sort of advice is to really use this Mars and Virgo energy in particular to really balance your temperament and any reactivity um, in, you know, up against the Cancer and Leo transits and to just really take constructive and productive action this month. And again, taking that time out for, you know, um, zooming out, right? And, and taking care of yourself, right? And additionally, because travel and movement may increase this month, there's a message here to be mindful of how busyness of how travel and even pleasure seeking, right, can affect diet and budget, right? So definitely keep those things in mind. But in general, the celestial signs just really point to this being a great month, a month to align your inner and outer worlds for flow and to take aligned actions that really reflect your authenticity and that support achieving your aspirations and just a life that truly feels good. With so much cardinal and mercurial energy activated, the cosmos is just truly encouraging and offering supportive energy for a balance of spiritual, creative, and aspirational discovery and play social and independent learning, organizing and planning, and taking fearless and carefully calculated initiative in all of your affairs. In terms of key dates and aspects, we begin July with a bit of a bang, right? We begin July a week into cancer season and start July off with the sun and Mercury conjunct, meeting up with each other in cancer and forming a trine to Saturn who's retrograde in Pisces and also forming a sextile with Jupiter in Taurus. And all of this is on the same day that Neptune stations retrograde in Pisces. Meanwhile, the moon is reaching full illumination in Capricorn. All right, so that's a lot. So what does this all mean? So these first three days just really bring a mix of good spirits, exciting, surprising, and emotional news, even unexpected expenses related to something worthwhile, but also helpful information and resources and harmony related to your communications and collaborations with others and your practical affairs and any planning. These first few days could see you tying up loose ends and solidifying details, deals, agreements, and supportive alliances in anything related to home life, relocation, real estate, travel and foreign affairs, legal or administrative dealings, or education projects, and any issues in close relationships. The transits these first three days also help you make great impressions and have emotional impact with people in positions of authority who could be of support in some way. And it's a favorable time for completing and publishing projects and having emotional impact. Because Neptune stations retrograde and this is the full moon time, July 1st through the 7th may also be a deeply introspective and emotionally rapturous time as well. Having all of our major outer planets retrograde 
during this time of a Capricorn full moon opening the month and making aspects with Mercury, Jupiter, and Taurus, and Saturn, and Pisces. It just really punctuates how July and onward will be about course correction and reconciling wisdom from the past and second chances to fulfill a dream or succeed at something. In this full moon, this Capricorn full moon on July 3rd, is a sort of omen, right, that the events of July will bring a sort of mental, emotional, and spiritual paradigm shift in how you understand the past, your present, your purpose, and potential future. It will bring a shift in how you relate to the world, and it's really about encouraging you to relate from this clear, authentic sense of your personality and personal power, and just letting the world adjust to you. (laughs) This full moon gives you wisdom and clarity into your unique identity as well, from understanding history, culture, and modern knowledge and its relationship to your own personal experiences. There's definitely something here about this full moon helping you to recognize your culture's special worth and using your ancestral wisdom as a source of empowerment and a resource in your aspirations. There's something here about how your unique point of view and understanding, however, adds new knowledge to what exists and contributes to your ability to course correct succeed in a second chance at something, but also break with traditions and groupthink. While at the same time, you see how your experience amongst diversity and different groups really helps you understand your unique perspective and point of departure. And so this full moon just really helps to understand the past and also your why for your aspirations going forward. It is about moving forward with a sense of integrity and empowerment and ultimately grace, right? And an intention to really integrate all of the parts of you, right? And to feel that internal harmony and have it relate in how you move forward in the world and you having harmony in what it is that you do, right? How you relate to the world around you. And so much of this is about light workers really understanding their purpose as wisdom keepers, earth keepers, and more, which is what I'm getting with this. But from the 7th through the 17th, the two weeks after the full moon, that is going to be the time, right, when that sort of balancing act happens related to all of the themes that I mentioned earlier, right? And it's this sort of getting your house in order and successfully managing your personal, emotional, and and practical life, right? Before vacation kind of energy, right? Like tying up loose ends. And the energy from like the 14th around the time of the new moon or the 17th throughout the rest of the month is really about uh, you having these experiences and these insights that really confirm to you something about your alignment with your personal power and your purpose and destiny and your ability to problem solve or maintain harmony, you know, within yourself um, and in your external environment, right? And that's, even if that means coming into contact with, you know, conventions, people and views that differ from yours or that attempt to deter you from your peace, your personal desires, or your truths and convictions or authentic sense of being and, and, even your boundaries, right? Particularly if you are charting a new path in some way. This could be a time, right, where you also sort of have these realizations maybe related to some sort of deja vu moment, right, with a circumstance, person, or a personality type, right, that gives you an opportunity to really make a different choice based on having evolved, right? And any of these scenarios essentially just being a test or a catalyst of some sort for you to really establish the power dynamics in your relationships and your affairs from this enlightened new self, right? 
We end the month with the sun transitioning into Leo on the 23rd, officially ending the month in Leo season. And then um, we have Mercury and Leo making a conjunction with Venus while it is retrograde in Leo, uh, right before it enters into Virgo on the 28th. And we also end the month with Venus and Mars both becoming invisible. And so all of this means is that the end of the month, this sort of last week, really marks many things coming to a sort of pleasant completion, right? Projects, conflicts even, or even trips, right? If you took vacations, right? And it just being a time for rest and really reaping rewards from previous efforts and moving into some new energy. You'll definitely have to leave some comments down below. Let me know what happens for you this month. What sort of new insights and experiences and even successes come your way, right? And so we're going to end this reading with some spiritual guidance that came through for the collective. July is definitely looking to be a very spiritual month, and we got some angel number messages, all right? And these angel numbers were the numbers 411, 211, and 222. And just so you know, I tend to always get angel number messages throughout while I am channeling related to the energies, and I simply note them down, and I wait to read what they say as I am reading them to you. And so we all find out together all of the ways that the messages resonate. All right. So related to the angel number four, 11. Four relates to working determinately towards achieving your goals and aspirations. And it's a number that's about hard work and effort and building solid foundations and maintaining motivation and practicality, system and order, passion and drive. That sounds about right. And it's also a number that it's related to the archangels and ancestors and spirit team. Number one is about new beginnings, right? It's about projects, self-leadership, inner strength and assertiveness, uniqueness and individuality, ambition and willpower. And it's about creating our realities with our thoughts, beliefs, and actions. And the master number 11 is a part of this, right? And it relates to spiritual awakening and enlightenment, illumination, positive energy, creative idealism, inspiration and intuition, and self-expression and sensitivity. And the message of Master Number 11 is that to connect with our higher selves is to know, live, and serve our divine life purpose and soul mission. So Angel Number 411 is a message to engage in creative projects and pursuits and concentrate and focus on your spirituality and serving your divine life purpose. Stay away from negative situations and keep a positive attitude and outlook in regards to your life and destiny. All right, especially as you undertake an important new role or venture. And your positive energies, intentions, and actions will help to manifest your expected results. So trust your angels to deliver all that you will need. It's a number that encourages progressive change, renewal, and growth, and tells you to share your knowledge and wisdom with others. It also tells you that all that you put your efforts towards will reap rewards. So expect your well-earned rewards for good work well done. You deserve the very best. So keep striving ahead and don't take no for an answer. Expect miraculous answers and solutions to appear as you need them and ask the angels for vital information that you may need to know. Wow, that absolutely, absolutely maps on to the astrology and channeled insights that I got. Okay, so number 211 was the next one that I got. And this is composed of the numbers two and master number 11, which is all about partnership and relationships, 
diplomacy and adaptability, sensitivity, and also faith and trust in your divine life purpose and soul mission. All right. And with the master number 11, again, we mentioned it's about new beginnings and new projects, self-reliance and you know, spiritual awakening and enlightenment and connecting with our higher selves. So 211 represents the cycles of experience and regeneration that gift us higher consciousness, knowledge and higher wisdom sensitivity, education, and intellect. And it's all about balance and peace while taking a fresh new direction. It's a message not to be hindered by old patterns and habits that are in need of change. And it asks you to look upon new experiences with optimism as they will bring about positive effects and favorable opportunities. Absolutely. It also helps with achieving your goals and allows the old to be replaced with the new. It's a message to pay attention to any recurring thoughts about yourself and your life. Because your thoughts and beliefs are manifesting at a rapid rate. So ensure you focus on your desired outcomes only. All right. And it's a message from your angels that you are on your divine life path and are going in the right direction. Absolutely. Have faith and trust that wonderful opportunities will lead to happiness and personal fulfillment. And you are being encouraged and supported as your angels surround you. The angelic messages will be heard in divine right time. So listen to your intuition, inner wisdom, and higher self to hear them. Yes, (laughs) absolutely. Absolutely. All right. And lastly, 222 is the master builder number that is related to ancient wisdom, vision, idealism, and transformation. And it's about faith, trust, encouragement, and cooperation, right? And balance. And it has to do with balance while manifesting miracles and new auspicious and timely opportunities, right? And it's about taking a balanced, harmonious, and peaceful stance in all areas of your life. Keep the faith and stand strong in your personal truths and everything will turn out for the best in the long term. Yes, it says do not put your energies into negativity and be aware that all is working out for your highest good and the highest good of all involved. So keep up the good work you are doing as evidence of your manifestations will be coming to fruition. All right, so trust that nothing happens by chance and that everything is happening for a reason. Maintain a positive attitude and you will find that everything will have positive results and you will receive abundant blessings and divine right timing. Okay. So those are the overall astrological insights for you for the month of July. Definitely like this video and subscribe to the channel and let me know how this all comes to pass for you, how it resonates with what is going on in your life. And definitely stay tuned for your individual horoscopes and tarot spiritual practical guidance for the month as well. Take good care and take care of your hearts. Thank you for watching.